Ulcerative colitis is the topic, also abbreviated UC. And at the end, I have um, a couple of clinical vignettes to share. So ulcerative colitis is basically uh, one of the main inflammatory bowel diseases. And basically, it's a chronic inflammation uh, inside the colon. And um, just draw a very brief diagram of a colon. And basically, this is the ascending colon. This is the transverse colon. This is the descending colon. And this is the sigmoid colon. And then this is the rectum. Uh, ulcerative colitis um, usually begins in the rectum. And it may remain localized to the rectum or extend, uh, sometimes involving the entire colon. But a key uh, uh, aspect is that it's continuous. Uh, continuous uh, is very important to remember because there's the other big type of uh, inflammatory bowel disease, which many of you know is called Crohn. And Crohn's disease is actually happens in segments. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about Crohn's disease, but I just wanted to mention that key difference between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Most Crohn's disease happens with these skip lesions where there's uh, inflammation followed by normal bowel and then inflammation, whereas in the ulcerative colitis, it's continuous. Another key uh, difference between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease involves the fact that the bowel wall in ulcerative colitis the inflammation is limited to the mucosa and submucosa. Whereas in, with Crohn's disease, it involves the full thickness of the wall. So that, that term, that's known as transmural infl inflammation, the full thickness of the wall. But with uh, ulcerative colitis, just the superficial mucosa, uh, superficial mucosal inflammation is um, the characteristic finding. So I just really briefly wanted to mention those two things. And as you can probably deduce from the name ulcerative colitis, there's ulcers in the colon. So if this was the colon wall, you'd have these ulcers, which are essentially craters that uh, can be seen during a colonoscopy, a sigmoidoscopy. So let's talk a little bit about how a patient would present. A patient, if they have UC, they'll probably come most likely was a presentation of bloody stools. Um, but actually, a better, better way to describe it is bloody diarrhea. And the um, patient will also have weight loss. And left lower quadrant, LLQ, abdominal pain, um, because of the involvement of the sigmoid colon and then something known as tenesmus, which is straining during bowel movements. There's other uh, nonspecific symptoms that the patient can present with, such as malaise, fatigue, fever, uh, but these are very, very important ones that you should look for in a clinical vignette. Now, by itself, these symptoms are kind of difficult to make a diagnosis. So how do you actually diagnose it? Well. The mainstay of diagnosis is doing a colonoscopy. But for most uh, patients, you really just have to do the sigmoidoscopy. And what that means is that you're just looking at the sigmoid colon. You don't have to look at the entire colon. And when you do the sigmoidoscopy, you take a biopsy. And this biopsy will show the characteristic superficial uh, mucosal inflammation. And that is the key to diagnosing ulcerative colitis. There's several other tests that can be done in the workup of a patient uh, that has suspected UC, such as stool cultures, um, and then of course the various blood tests such as the CBC. Uh, but the sigmoidoscopy with the biopsy is the most important. It will allow visual uh, confirmation and the, the, the biopsy will of course um, give you a microscopic evaluation as well. Prognosis. Well, ulcerative colitis unfortunately can lead to colon cancer and the colon cancer risk increases as time goes on. About uh, 
basically every five to ten years the risk just keeps rising uh, so unfortunately that's a, a very uh, serious prognostic factor in uh, ulcerative colitis the treatment there's quite a few drugs but there's really main two main uh, medications that are used for mild disease there's a medication that's very popular that's of, uh, commonly tested it's mesalamine also known as 5-ASA it's the chemical name for moderate to severe disease it's almost always corticosteroids and the corticosteroids um, most commonly used are like prednisone and there's several other uh, medications involved uh, but uh, these are the two biggest ones and interestingly one-third of patients with UC will need over the course of their uh, disease will need some surgical intervention to, to uh, treat this uh, condition so just some key points I wanted to touch on before I get into the clinical vignettes ulcerative colitis UC uh, almost always begins with the in the rectum and then can progress in a continuous fashion no skip lesions to the rest of the colon the inflammation involves just the submucosa or superficial mucosa it's not transmural okay that's the transmural is what happens in Crohn's disease symptoms include um, abdominal pain in the left rural quadrant uh, bloody diarrhea and um, treatment involves drugs such as 5-ASA also known as mesalamine and corticosteroids and diagnosis is a uh, sigmoidoscopy uh, with a biopsy So those are some of the key points. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. 34-year-old businessman presents with three-month history of frequent episodes of loose stool uh, preceded by left lower abdominal cramping. For the past six weeks, the stools have become increasingly bloody. On a number of occasions, he has had a sensation of rectal fullness but has been unable to pass any fecal matter. He travels extensively. He's been to Asia, India, Pakistan, Germany, Sweden, in past year working on telecommunications infrastructure deals physical exam he has mild tenderness in the left lower quadrant a rectal exam reveals grossly but bloody stools sigmoidoscopy reveals inflammation extending in a symmetric and circumferential pattern from the anal verge to the distal descending colon multiple stool tests are negative for bacterial and parasitic infections which are the following most likely uh, cause of the patient's symptoms well um, this patient has ulcerative colitis and that is characterized by the superficial ulceration um, superficial ulceration that occurs in the um, colon and this uh, the fact that it's uh, extending initially from the, the rectum anal area all the way to the distal descending colon um, supports that. He's also got the bloody stools, the left lower quadrant pain. All these symptoms are characteristic of UC. What's in, in interesting is Crohn's disease is more likely left lower quadrant. Um, cytomegalovirus virus usually with the AIDS patients and then they've told you that the the uh, parasitic and bacterial infection tests were negative so that kind of takes away any of the other infectious diarrhea uh, causes so ischemic colitis is probably not the choice um, because ischemic colitis usually does not start at the anal verge it's usually seen more with elderly patients and this is a patient that's only 34 years of age 
So even if you weren't sure, if you kind of um, go through a process of elimination, you get to the final answer. The last one, a 28-year-old white woman comes to the office with eight-month history of weight loss, fatigue, and diarrhea. She states that she has stools approximately six times per day and there is blood present in the majority of them. She denies any personal or family history of previous GI problems. Temperature is 99, blood pressure is normal, pulse is 110. Physical exam reveals present normal active bowel sounds. Her abdomen is soft, diffuse tenderness without rebound or guarding. An office sigmoidoscopy reveals friable mucosa with multiple bleeding points uh, and no areas, no areas of normal mucosa. A colonic mucosal biopsy is likely to show. Okay, so this is actually a very good question. Um, this patient has ulcerative colitis. Um, she has the classic weight loss, abdominal pain. She's got the bloody stools. And essentially what they're saying is when you do a biopsy, what are you going to see? Well, let's go through these. Cobblestone stoning, skip lesions, and transmural. That is all describing Crohn's disease, which is the other big form of inflammatory bowel disease. So this is UC. So it's not A, B, or D. Villus atrophy is actually uh, seen uh, when you do a biopsy of a colon when somebody has celiac uh, sprue, which is a different condition altogether. Celiac sprue. So even if you didn't know the answer, the answer by process of elimination is C, which is, of course, the biopsy finding in ulcerative colitis because you don't have the full thickness of the bowel wall affected. Just the superficial mucosa is inflamed in ulcerative colitis.